This should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. What's up YouTube? It's your boy Raheem the Rabbit back at it again with another reaction video and welcome to the rabbit hole. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I ask you guys to please hit that like button and smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you can get alerted when I upload new content. Definitely enjoying this organic climb and every hundred subscribers, we're definitely going to do a live stream. So I want to say uh, thank you to all the new subscribers to the channel. So without further ado, we will be reacting to this video in three, two, one. Microphone check, one, two, one, two. It's your boy Ryan the Rabbit back at it again on a beautiful Tuesday now in the regular version of the matrix it, it will be taco tuesday taco tuesday taco tuesday but over here in the rabbit hole we do things a little bit different shout out to all the ladies with the 36 double d recesses tango bitties Showing all those angles, hit them with the angles in my Drizzy Drake voice, and sending a thousand and one thirst traps, and then complaining about the thousand and one DMs that they get from countless men only wanting to pursue them for their physical attributes, but they have no idea why they get all these guys in their DMs. So we call it Titty Tuesday. Titty Tuesday. <sighs> Shout out to everybody on the check in. My man Stephen O'Brady. Shout out to the O'Bradys. All my Port Richmond alumni. Stephen O'Brady. Mark O'Brady, aka Sweets. And Camille. Camille. Camille O'Brady, the O'Bradys. Shout out to y'all, man. It's good to see uh just segueing before I get into the, the show. It's good to see black folks doing good, especially a black family. I grew up with the O'Brady's as a young tyke <laughs> running track, you know what I mean? We were track and field superstars in our heyday, you know what I mean? Ask me to run now, shit. Ain't running nowhere. <laughs> but yeah, we, we were some awesome track stars uh, back in the day running for uh, Port Richmond High School. And shout out to uh, Mr. Bash and Barry B with his pork chop sideburns. <laughs> He won't, he won't let the 1970s go. I, I'd say he's been getting the same haircut for about, about 30 years. <laughs> but anyway, um, if you read the show, if you've read the title of the show, why is Kendra G mad? Why is she so mad? Right? And um, before I get into that, I just want to say I hit a milestone. If, if everybody didn't know, everybody that's new to my uh, YouTube channel over on YouTube at Raheem the Rabbit. I hit a milestone. I'm currently over the plateau of 100 subscribers. So, you know what I mean? I'm definitely putting in the work. I'm, I'm enjoying the organic climb. So, I just want to give a personal shout out to all the newcomers to the page. And don't forget to subscribe. I just uh, uploaded a, a show yesterday. 
Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, leave a comment. It's good for the algorithm, and I'm looking forward to every hundred subscribers. You know, this is a dope organic climb, so I just want to say shout out to all the new subscribers to my uh, YouTube channel. So, yes, I've been looking at Miss Kendra G's uh, videos and her platform. And shout out to Kendra G. If you get a chance, go subscribe to her channel. I'm not a hater. <laughs> I'm just a critique of her work. That's about it. You know what I mean? Um, I've noticed something, right? Now, little does everybody know. Kendra G was on Kevin Samuels show last year. And uh, rest in peace to the Godfather, Kevin Samuels, right? And when she was on Kevin Samuels show, she pretty much got dog walked on there with her ridiculous talking points. And I think she was on there, you know, trying to chase some clout, do some clout chasing because she heard that he was on the come up or whatever, whatever. And this was before Kevin Samuels uh, subscriber count, you know, jumped to a million plus subscribers. It, it was after the, you know, average at best call. But the interview, the, or I think it was the IG call, the IG call that he did with Kendra G, it was very cringe. It was, it was cringe to watch because, again, she represents a large portion of modern black women out here on the dating market and let me give it let me give it some context right this is not a piss on Kendra G show I just want to give it give it context so it can be relatable right Kendra G is over the age of 40 I think she's 40 I think she's 41 if I'm correct she's 41 very successful she's a radio personality um entrepreneur you know slash 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 um no children she doesn't have any children she froze her eggs <laughs> a talking point that uh kevin samuels definitely had some jokes about because again we're looking at it from the most logical point of view and it's what's natural this is how all women naturally across the board give birth the natural way so you know do i have an issue with it a small one <laughs> but i'll get to that later so she's 41 she took the career route right and i want to i want to stay right there for a second and i'll come down the, the age gap some I'll come down to at least 35 right and there's a reason why I'm gonna start from 35 according to OBGYN and gynecologist not me let me say that again not me say it again not me <laughs> gynecologist and OBGYN have coined the term geriatric pregnancy and I have this argument or debate with a lot of women because they think we're equal we're not equal we are different by nature we're different we got XX chromosome XY chromosome we are different biologically so, therefore, we're not equal. Let's get that out the way. So, women who are over the age of 35 are clinically, you fall into this term called geriatric pregnancy. And all that means is now, biologically, this has nothing to do with men. Let me say this again. This has nothing to do with men. But I find it very rich that the blame gets shifted and pointed to the man only after you hear this gripe coming from women over the age of 35 and are having problems finding a possible suitor to take them off the dating market and marry them 
and go off into the sunset. Keyword, possible pseudo, right? So, you get the term geriatric pregnancy, and this is when the woman's body starts getting rid of the eggs in their ovaries at a more rapid rate. So that's why gynecologists and OBGYN, they recommend for women, you know, women get monthly checkups and whatnot more, you know, more frequent, frequently, especially after you turn uh, uh, 35 years old, they get more, more checkups and stuff. You know, the female body starts doing a whole bunch of weird, weird things. So they recommend that you try to have a child at a younger age when you're more fertile and the likelihood of you carrying a successful baby to term is higher with less complications. Now, that's the simplest I can put it. Doctors, gynecologists, they recommend you have a child in your earlier years, preferably in your 20s, so you can carry a baby successfully and healthy to term with no complications at all. You got nothing to worry about. Now, due to a woman's biology, her makeup, after 35, you run the risk now of not carrying to term or having pregnancy complications. The risk, the risks are higher now and it's a traumatic experience on a woman's body. I don't think we're here to, to argue that. So with that being in mind, let's move forward. So I'll, I'll tackle the, the freezing of the eggs, right? Because there's actually two women that's in this category. Uh, Kendra G and uh, what's shorty name from uh, 106 and Park? Ro Roxy Diaz. Cute little Latino <laughs> woman. Shout out to Roxy Diaz. Uh, another one that is very, and, and I, it's good too that I just, I brought this up. And again, shout out to Roxy Diaz. Now, she also froze her eggs. Now, I don't know of her personal dating history. I don't know what type of traumatic experiences that she has encountered in the dating market. I just know she used to be on 106 and Park. Uh, I've seen her in, in various, hosting various shows on MTV, etc., etc. She's very successful in her career. And I want to put them two together. Now, they're in the same age bracket. Now, we're going on looks. Kendra G, I'm pretty sure in her earlier days, in like her late 20s, early 30s, the bomb, as a 41-year-old woman, she still looks okay. And, you know, she got her body together. Looks looks natural to me. You know what I mean? Looks natural to me. But again, compare her to Roxy Diaz. Roxy Diaz, again, natural, no enhancements. Uh, she's in the gym. I've seen it on her, her on her IG page. She's in the gym. Her body's a little tighter. A little tighter. So I would roll the dice and say she has a better chance at at least getting a decent guy because of her fitness. Even though she's up in age, her body is together. And that's one talking point that goes over a lot of women's heads. Men, we are visual. I understand you guys are visual too. But the way that men are attracted to women is not the same of how women are attracted to men. I'm going to say that again. The way that men are attracted to women are, is not the same as how women are attracted to men. And our values are different. Let me explain in my Kevin Hart voice. A man has to earn his value and make himself valuable. He has to get out here in the world and create his value. That's why women go after men with status. 
and or they're doing way better than the average blue or white collar working class guy particularly black black men that are making the medium income of 50,000 they want the the women want these particular type of men that can provide a certain type of lifestyle a comfortable lifestyle right you know the the house the white picket fence the teacup yorkie etc etc they the american dream right and it would have with an apple pie on the counter. Most women want this particular dream, the American dream. It's not just a black woman thing. It's a it's a woman thing. Most women want the guy, the knight in shining armor. You know that that whole Disney, that whole Disney story. Most most people want want that. Shout out to my brother Xavier on the check. What's up, my brother? Hope everything is well. Hope the family is good. Um. Yeah, so pretty much that's it. Now, a woman's value... Hear me? I'm going to say this slowly. Because this talking point seems to be getting lost in the sauce. Being that we live in this uh, Me Too culture. Quick to cancel everybody. Everybody's all sensitive and whatnot. You got to watch what you say. You don't want to offend anybody with the truth. But, Asadi... I saw Listen, ladies, your value, when it's in the eyes of the man, your value is how you look, your face, and your body, and your youth, your fertility. Because again, you're working against nature. So, you'll take a guy that's say he's well established, he's over the age of 35, hell, we even say 40, right, he's over the, he's over that age, he's making a substantial amount of money, he's single, he's in shape, uh, no kids, has his own house and or condo, whatever, he drives whatever, I really don't, really doesn't make me know, never mind, he has a vehicle, he has a means of transportation, we'll give him 5'10", it's the average height of the average man. Don't believe me? Look that shit up. I, I, just let me just segue for a second. I hate this thing that this has become the new norm and asking of modern women. They go, well, I want a guy that's six feet tall and makes over six figures. Really? Well, only 13 to 14% of the male population is over six feet tall. And the average man is 5'10". So, if the average black woman is 5'4". Say that again. The average woman, black woman, is 5'4". But generally speaking, the women now, putting all women into this conversation, women are the smaller of the species on the planet. Are there exceptions to the rule? Sure. Every, it's like Sesame Street. <laughs> One of these kids is doing her own thing. Yes, there's short women, there's tall women, there's medium women, there's big women. Cool, we, we understand this concept. But generally speaking, women are the smaller of the species. Men are the bigger of the species. So, women tend to want a man that is bigger than them so they can feel safe and feel protected whatever i'm just here to say that the percentage of males on the planet that are over six feet tall is about 13 to 14 percent and you do that times seven billion people so you're looking for a small percentage of men anyway over six feet makes over six figures again 10% 10% of the male population makes over six figures. 10. That's it. The number has not changed for the past 25 years. It has not gone anywhere. Like I said, the higher you go up on the socioeconomic ladder, the smaller the amount gets. And for some strange reason, modern women don't get this. So this is why I have a beef with Kendra G. 
do I have a beef with how she is accomplished in her endeavors in her in her career absolutely not she's a black woman out here doing a damn thug dizzle she broke through the mold and made and made something of herself and she's a career woman good for her but absolutely absolutely not am i talking down on her uh professional accomplishments absolutely not no i am not what i am saying is when women choose the career route and pay attention ladies because this is the conversation where they think men and women are equal and we're supposed to get the same outcomes no when a woman chooses the career route and doesn't take the family route like i'm only addressing women that are single career women with no kids pay attention There's choices and trade-offs that come with taking the career route. And one of the trade-offs is you're going to get the money, you're going to get the status, you're going to get the clout, any and everything. But it's going to take time. It's going to take time to get there. And here's where we can flip it. Now let me make it make sense to the ladies in the back of the classroom. For black men specifically, a black man does not come into his financial own until after the age of 40. I'm going to say that really slow for everybody in the front of the classroom and everybody in the back of the classroom. Black men in particular do not come into their financial own until after the age of 40. That's when they become financially sound. Because you have to at least put 10 to 15 years into whatever craft that you pursue to get to that type of financial uh, earnings and it be steady, right? And we call these guys high value men. High value men, that's just one component. And I wanna clear, I wanna clear the, the, the air space to the women I'm specifically speaking to the women And I'll speak to the men Who may not be in the know Shout out to my brother James Rich On the check-in Shout out to your brother Big U And handsome <laughs> Hi Shout out to the whole Clifton High I gotta chop it up with you my brother You gotta, you gotta come on over to the other side we'll, we'll speak offline But um Yeah Black men in particular It takes black men over the age of 35, preferably 40, to get into their financial own, right? Cool. But having the money is just one component. And I think that gets lost in the sauce due to how women perceive men via social media, right? Here's the issue. The issue is most of the single women on the dating market are comparing regular working class blue and white collar men to celebrities I'm going to say that again most blue and white collar working class women are comparing regular blue and white collar working class men to celebrities and here's what you got to understand ladies those men who just happen to be a celebrity, a rapper, athlete, influencer, etc., etc., these men are in the top 1% of earners. Hell, even the top five. After you make over $500,000 a year, you're automatically catapulted into the top 5% of earners across the United States. So again, as you go up in salary, annual salary, the smaller the number gets. And it's usually more men up there than it is women. That's why women chase the men up there in the top, starting from the top 10% of earners. The top 10% of earners make over six uh, six figures. And we're talking about uh, 130,000 on the low end. And hell, now how, depending on how pretty you are, right? It, we're talking about uh, a woman's sexual marketplace value. Depending on how pretty you are and what your body looks like, 
that determines your value and what type of men you have access to. I'm going to say that again for all the women in the back of the classroom. Depending on how pretty you are, and we're not talking about everybody gets a first, uh, first place trophy or participation award because another woman is telling you that you're pretty and you're beautiful, etc., etc. No. This is how the market is perceiving you, particularly men. Men determine your value. If you say you're a 10, <laughs> I know that this is a, a popular talking point on all social media platforms. Women tend to classify themselves as a 10. Because they want to they want the best. They they overinflate their value all the time. They think so highly of themselves. Oh, I'm a 10. I'm a 10. I'm a 10. Hell. Kendra G thinks she's a 10. Right? I'll give her this. Professionally, you're a 10. Professionally. But do men look at women? Are, are men attracted to a woman based on her finances? Hell no. Hell to the no. A man is not attracted to a woman the same way a woman is attracted to a man. A woman will be attracted... Yeah, sure, she's, she's going to like what she sees. But she's attracted to your lifestyle and what you can provide. Provider, keyword, provider. A man is attracted to what he sees first. That's why women get mad... Because they think they can get all these PhDs and degrees and making all this money. And I'm an entrepreneur and I own two companies. I own two companies, Kendra. <laughs> Shout out to the YouTuber, Don Lexi. If you get a chance to uh, subscribe to his channel. Um, yeah, like, I own two companies, Kendra. Like, that makes you more attractive. Let me, let me break this down for you, ladies. And I think Kendra G struggles with this talking point we don't care about your money because we don't have access to it we don't care about your degrees because it's of no benefit to the man I'm going to say that again your degrees and your money is of no consequence it's, 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 it's irrelevant to a man that is already financially sound and making the money that you want him to make. Let me make that clear. If a man is making a substantial amount of money per year, and hell, I'll make an example. He's in the top 10% of earners, right? He makes over six figures. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make the example sweet. I'm going to make it sweet. He makes over six figures, right? So typically, he's the man that you want, and I'll give him 5'10. He's the bare minimum. He's 5'10. That's average. Nothing wrong with being average. This is this is a, a a struggle concept that modern women have today on today's dating market. Men, we're not judged on our physical appearance. We that's not how we're judging. That's not how we're valued. And the extreme example is um, if you're like a supermodel or something, like Tyson Beckford, just to make you know for shits and giggles. Sure, he makes his living based on how he looks. He's a supermodel. He's in shape. He's ripped. He's sculpted. And that's how he pays his bills. Sure. But that's the only example where a man is making his way based on how he looks. Is that the norm of how men are judged? No. A man is judged on his ability to provide and secure. That's how a woman is attracted to him. He's like, oh, okay. He's a hardworking man. He makes this amount of money. He uh, has a house. He has a condo. Blah, blah, blah. He doesn't have any kids. He's handsome. Blah, 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 blah. You can add in all the variables, right? That is how a woman is attracted to a man. Now, flip it in reverse. All of that tangible stuff I just said about a man, men don't look at women that way. We don't. We don't. We go, okay, is she pretty? What the body look like? That's the starting point. You know what I mean? Everything else can fall in line after that. 
and I'll I'll just I'll put my own personal spill on it for like two seconds. Yes, I want to like what I see first. Naturally, I'm more drawn to natural beauty. So sorry, ladies. I hate to shoot you guys down, but all that weave wearing Skittles color, Freddy Krueger nails, Snuffleupagus eyelashes shit with me. I know like. I know like and I think I'll go out on the limb and say most heterosexual black men do not approve of that shit. We didn't green light that. I said this before in other shows, we didn't green light that. Y'all took that and ran with it because y'all think it looks good, but ask every heterosexual black man on the dating market today, do they like this weird shit that they're doing with the fucking baby hair? They're pay they're gluing the baby fake baby hair on top of their heads and putting on these weird Skittles colors crooked lace fronts, Yaki number 12, ridiculous Skittles colors, fake ass fucking Freddy Krueger nails, it it looks ridiculous, to be honest, it looks ridiculous, but ask any man, no, they want a woman that's naturally pretty, natural, wears her own hair, and her body is tight, that's what we go off first, then we dive into the other characteristics of the type of woman that we're looking for. Is she feminine? Is she agreeable? Is she nice to be around? Do I I feel feminine energy coming off of her when I'm chilling with her behind closed doors? And my thing is, can I tolerate you outside of the bedroom? Of course, we're animals by nature. We're sexually drawn to each other. But outside of the bedroom, can I tolerate you? Can you bring me peace of mind? Basically, that's what every man wants. Every man wants a pretty girl on his arm and to give him peace. Give him some babies. (laughs) Give him some babies. But bring that man some peace. No man wants to be with a pretty woman and a pretty woman that's argumentative all the time. You might as well throw her back to the streets. Here, go back. We don't want you. I don't care how pretty you are. If you're not pleasant to be around, I don't want you. I don't want you. And again, let me just reiterate uh, reiterate the point of Kendra G. I don't know why she's so upset. I, I know why she's upset. <laughs> and for ones, one thing that I don't appreciate about Kendra G, this is a, a small bone I have to pick with Kendra G. And I think uh, the YouTuber, Don Lexi, actually hits these talking points uh, several times that I've heard. After the passing of Kevin Samuels, she took some of his talking points and kind of model, modeled it to her show, her her IG live show. She, she took uh, several Kevin Samuels talking points and took it to model her show. But the difference is, right, and this is just a, a repetitive process that I've noticed of watching her show because I, I do watch the show I, I I critique because I watch it end to end and what I've noticed is uh not all but some people that had an issue with Kevin Samuels they didn't watch the shows end to end they only watched the viral clips that was on world star and blah 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 but one thing he did do he just mirrored the energy that he was given back if a woman came on there and she was disrespectful, rude, trying to overtalk him and just verbally try to attack him because they didn't like the information that he was giving them, he just mirrored the energy back. You know what I mean? That's why that one woman went viral, the average at best. It's like, hey, if most people are average looking across the board, black, white, purple, yellow, green, doesn't matter your ethnic ethnicity, uh, your ethnic group, men or women, most people are average, I'm average looking, yes, some of us hit the genetic lottery, and you're, you have above average looks, you know what I mean, you, we all know when you was in high school, that one girl that got all the attention, light skin Keisha with the fucking ponytails and the baby hair and the baby powder on her neck and all the guys wanted to buy her candy and shit like that we we all know or uh the, the we'll just call him Keith handsome Keith 
in high school. He was tall. He was on the basketball team. He had 360 waves, spinning, had light hazel eyes. And all the women were like, oh, my God, Keith, he's so fine. He's so fine. You get the gist of what I'm saying. You hit the genetic lottery. So, everybody, let's not act like we're fucking retarded. And we don't know what the fuck we talking about as consenting adults. You know if you look good. Stop it. Stop it. You know if you look good. And I, I hate to go over and over on a tangent a little bit, but come on. Attraction is in the eye of the beholder. That's bullshit. Bullshit. You know if you look good, ladies and gentlemen. But the, here's the variable in, in regards to the dating market. I call it the Biggie Smalls effect. <laughs> And recipes to Frank White, Christopher Wallace. Spread love the Brooklyn way. I call it the Biggie Smalls effect. And there's a reason why I call it the Biggie Smalls effect. Because we all know his lyric. Black and ugly as ever. However, I stay coogee down to the socks. I think most women don't. That lyric or that bar goes over most women's heads. But for men who it applies to. They reinforce that in their everyday life. Black and ugly as ever. However, I stay coogee down to the socks. I may not be the Chad or the Keith that you're looking for. But I'm going to be fresh to death. I'm going to dress nice. I'm going to smell good. If you got a beard, you're going to keep it shaped up. You may not be in shape. But you're going to be dressed to the T. You're going to be charismatic. Uh... You're going to have charm. You're going to have wit. You're going to be funny. And you're going to have the gift of gab. And just some icing on the cake. This guy has money. That's the variable. That women will overlook your physical attributes because you have money. Does it work the other way around? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It does not work. And here is the problem and the issue that we have in the dating market today. Women are complaining in the numbers, in the masses, that are not getting the results that they want, particularly Kendra G and others. And that's why I'm only using her because I have a small bone to pick with her because they're sending out this false message to the women who it applies to. And what I've noticed is it's only the women... Who are over 35, preferably 40, who are over the wall, you're, you're, according to OBGYN and gynecologists, you're in that geriatric pregnancy uh, group. A lot of them are overweight, sloppy looking, lace fronts, crooked wigs, fake baby hair. Attitude. Some of them have kids. One, two, three baby daddies. But you want a guy making over uh, six figures and six feet tall. Handsome as can be with a... I'm just being over-exaggerated. But with a six-pack and blah, blah, blah. And a lot of women want this man. And you want them all to yourself. But you don't even bring to the market what a man is asking for. You don't bring what the market is asking for. Men only, they, they don't ask for a lot. They just ask that you be pretty, fit, feminine. And yes, ladies, a man that is the same age as you, I'm talking to the women over the age of 35, preferably 40, you guys are not equal. You guys are not the same. He is going to get a younger version of you. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because, for one... They're more agreeable. They're more willing to get on a man's program. And they're pleasant to be around. There was an example that uh, Don Lexi gave. He said, uh, this one person in the comment section was like, yeah, I'm a 40 plus year old, you know, whatever he was, makes great money. And he said that, you know, once he split with his baby mama who was also 40 and they have a child da, 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 da. but he said he notices that he has more fun 
with the younger woman that he was dating. I think she was like 26 or something like that. And um, yeah, pretty much. She was younger. She was hotter. Probably looked way better than his baby mama. And even if the, the level of prettiness is equal, because, you know, women, they're always in constant competition with themselves and they don't never want to admit it. But even if the level of prettiness is equal, it's still how is the man experiencing you as a woman? How is he experiencing you? So you can be pretty all you want. If you're not a nice person to be around, no man is going to want to deal with you. I'm using the extreme example of Kendra G because she's a career woman. She's a professional woman. And she makes great money. And she's her peers. She's around men who make a substantial amount of money. And she thinks that just because she's around these men, that she can get one. And I think that needs to be said out loud more often. Just because you are around these men, or hell, you may even get lucky and hook up with some of these men. But being that you have aged yourself out of the stiff competition of women out there who are younger than you, who are prettier than you, and have better bodies than you, and uh, possess the level of femininity that you don't have, their chances are higher to get properly vetted and picked up from a decent guy that's going to treat them right. And that's basically what it all boils down to. I mean, people think this is like some type of trigonometry uh, equation of how to get a good man. This is not algebra. This is not trigonometry. This is simple math. One plus one is two. That's it. Men want their women to be fit, feminine, friendly. We are the only group, ethnic group of men on the planet right now dealing with two to three generations of women who are masculine, who are morbidly overweight and obese, according to the CDC and Human Health and Services. This is not what we say. This is what they say. And this is what we see. Hell. I took a screenshot um, the other day. And this is according to the CDC. The average height of the average black woman is 5'4 and weighs 187 pounds. And I'm going to leave you guys with this because that's not part of the show today. I was talking about Kendra G, but I'm going leave to you, leave you this cookie on the way out. The average man, man, not black, not white, Puerto Rican, Dominican, whatever. The average man is 5'10". 5'10". And weighs 168 pounds. Soak that in. The average man is 5'10". And weighs 168 pounds. The average black woman is 5'4" and weighs 187 pounds. I'm gonna let that marinate for a second. I'm gonna let you guys tell me. Re replay this video. Play it amongst your friends and, and have an open discussion. What's wrong with that picture? What's wrong with that picture? I'm gonna say it again. The average man, not a black white thing, it's being a man. The average man is 5'10". And weighs 168 pounds. Healthy. The average black woman is 5'4". And weighs 187 pounds. You tell me what's wrong with this picture. And I'm going to leave it right there. Now, closing on Kendra G. Kendra G. You have taken some of Kevin Samuel's talking points, which is fine, whatever. You you try to act like you don't know who he is and 
you've never been on this show because you got dog walked or etc etc at least if you're going to steal his talking points give that man his flowers in death give him his grace if you're going to steal his talking points and then on top of that the women that come on the show you refuse to tell them the brutal honest truth and i think you're hurting the women that you are giving this dating advice to because you're not telling them the truth you are feeding the delusion you have to tell these women the truth or else they're gonna go out there thinking they have time to get it done you don't have time <laughs> that's where you know again the argument of uh, modern women and modern men they think we're equal we're not equal we are not equal and you can't use extreme examples to try to override what's generally true that involves the majority of the population you cannot use extreme examples and that's just what they are extreme you can't use extreme examples to override what's generally true for the majority of the population the majority of men like a pretty woman that's in shape pretty fit feminine period that's it respect you can put all the other things in there respectful loyal communication etc etc it it will vary from ma uh, man to man but pretty much generally speaking overall uh most men want a woman that's fit feminine friendly agreeable <laughs> feels good to be around them i think i think that most men would agree on that heterosexual men <laughs> heterosexual men so i'll close saying this make sure you guys subscribe to my youtube channel at raheem the rabbit that's r-a-h-e-e-m-t-h-e-e -E -E -E, rabbit and again shout out to all the new subscribers to the channel you know i finally hit the 100 subscriber uh count definitely enjoying the organic climb and looking forward to growing, you know, organically growing the channel and putting out high quality HD content. And I'm looking forward to doing some live interviews. Uh, I've actually had a couple of conversations offline with a couple of ladies that, you know, I went to high school with. So shout out to them. I don't have to bring their names into the conversation just yet. We're going to we're going to have some very thought provoking uh uh, conversations and it's going to be good it's going to be good you know what I mean it's, it's good to have uh, healthy debates you know without the name calling and stuff we people we're adults we can agree to disagree but I will do one thing like I've always been doing I will be honest I will give honest critique I will be respectful and I'll keep an open mind especially when I hear you know a difference of opinions you know I'll, I'll probably give get some pushback or i'll give pushback to certain talking points but it is what it is you know what i mean so with that being said make sure again on the way out make sure you guys subscribe to my youtube channel after i'm finished this i'll actually put uh a link to my youtube page i'll actually uh, re-edit this and put it in there make sure you guys subscribe it's all good everybody please enjoy your titty tuesday <laughs> Start to dress warm. It's, it's going to get a little chilly in the weeks to come because winter is around the corner. And I will see you guys on the next episode of The Rabbit Hole or Rabbit Hole Discussions here on Facebook.